Greetings, fellow gearheads, or in some parts of the world, petrol heads. Eric the Car Guy here. Uh, I get lots of questions about performance issues. Uh, and something that I recommend to check for a lot of times is vacuum leaks. But I'm never quite clear on how you check for them. And for me, being clear is making a video about how to check for them. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. There's the correct way. And the correct way involves using propane enrichment, which you would take a piece of uh, fuel line and cut the end of this uh, torch off or find an end that you could fit this hose onto and crack, crack it open and go around the suspected area of the vacuum leak looking for an idle change. This is actually safer than the method that I'm about to show you which is using carburetor cleaner. The most common method is carburetor cleaner, but a word of caution, and I've seen this firsthand. Especially when the engine is hot, there is a very high potential to catch it on fire. And if you do that, that would make for kind of a bad day. So, should you employ this method that I'm about to show you, I insist that you have a fire extinguisher handy and one that's fully charged. Uh, if not, you run the risk of burning your car down. So definitely take that into consideration. Also, if you do this with the engine cold, you're much better off. A vacuum leak creates a lean condition. And many times what the car will do to compensate is it will richen up the mixture. Now some vacuum leaks you can hear. I've got a pretty good ear for vacuum leaks. Uh, not for beeps of keys, but a pretty good ear for vacuum leaks. So when I hear that high pitched hissing noise, the first thing I look for is a vacuum leak, particularly if there's a performance problem or if you get into more advanced uh, diagnostics, like say for instance you're looking at short and long term fuel trim on a scanner, you'll notice that it goes rich. So if you see uh, something that trends rich, it may not be the O2 sensor that you're looking at, it may very well be a vacuum leak. In fact, that's the first thing that I would look for. Let's get to it. Just to note, that whether you're using carburetor cleaner like I'm using here or you're using propane, the same rule applies. You spray or hold the propane in the suspected area of the vacuum leak and you listen for engine idle to change. First, you've got to start the engine. Now generally where I like to look is around the intake manifold for leaks because basically that's where intake manifold starts and end is all around the intake manifold area. Don't forget to spray around PCV valves, things like that. But basically what you're doing is you're just spraying like around where the base of the injectors are. Any place that a vacuum line connects There's one there. Notice the change in the engine? Right here. I can even stall the engine on this one. That shouldn't happen. Let's do it one more time. Stall the engine. The complaint on this car was that it would stall intermittently but start right back up. Kind of a strange problem to diagnose sometimes because, uh, well, it's really difficult to diagnose something that's not acting up. So in this case, I, I'm just looking for everything. And keep an ear out for that high-pitched noise. I, I don't know if you could hear it on camera or not, but if you hear that high-pitched noise while your engine is running and you do this test and you can stall the engine, that's how you find an intake leak. Once you've found the intake leak, repair it. It may take some time for the ECU to reset or you may, or you may want to reset the ECU because what will happen with that short and long-term fuel trim, which I'll get into in another video, is the engine will be bias rich. So it will compensate for the extra air coming in through the vacuum leak. And once you get rid of the vacuum leak, it's all messed up. It wants to make it richer than it was before. So it may not want to run right for a while until it acclimates. Or if you reset the ECU, it, it may be okay. So that's how I check for vacuum leaks. Uh, once again, word of caution. On a hot engine, 
this can cause a fire. So be very careful of that and have a fire extinguisher handy. If it catches on fire, don't panic. Just grab the fire extinguisher and put it out. Um, if you don't have the fire extinguisher, it's a bad day. Fire extinguishers make a big mess, but you'd be surprised how much doesn't burn. The engine is used to getting a lot of heat, so even if it looks like the end of the world, you put those things out, and I've seen this firsthand, you put those fires out firsthand. You got a lot of black stuff everywhere, but most of the time things are still intact. Can't speak for your particular situation. I just want you to be cautious. I'm Eric the Car Guy. Visit me at ericthecarguy.com because it's so much fun and it's a really cool place to be. Oh yeah, stay dirty. See ya.